Our first thing I'm going to do is get on and put our salmon in the oven, really. So for this, I'm going to use a whole side of salmon. We're going to poach this with some lemon. It's kind of weird inviting you in and just cooking you a sandwich, but this is a bit of a posh sandwich, it's you not see. a small sandwich, I don't think. No, it is a decent-sized sandwich, Tom. <laughs> uh, a bit of salt, like that. Chuck in a few whole peppercorns, then half fill the tray with water and place in a preheated oven at 200 degrees C for about 10 minutes. So tell me about this stuff. Why, why Hampshire particularly? Well, Hampshire's been growing watercress now for about uh, 100, 120 years now. And it was at a period when it moved out of London and around some of the uh, larger cities in the UK. And they came down here for the water. So um, you look at the water in London, you wouldn't anticipate watercress, which needs fresh, absolutely. clear water to yeah, grow. Yeah, I think once there was, obviously, that, that was there. Uh, but as London... Not on the River Thames now. No, definitely not. The main ingredient for this sandwich will be this delicious watercress pesto. It's really simple to make. All you have to do is blend a few generous handfuls of watercress with some garlic, toasted pine nuts, salt, and a generous glug of good olive oil. Yeah. Is there any part of the year where it actually you can't actually produce watercress? We tend to harvest British watercress from April right the way through to November. So it's a long season for British farming. Good for you, though. It's great, yeah. <laughs> Love it. yeah. Right, so we're just going to make a little pesto, really. So what you do is just blitz this. And you end up with an amazing colour. Now, you do need plenty for this, because I've got a, a decent size loaf, so don't be frightened to put in loads and loads of pesto. So how do you eat yours, then? I have it most mornings for breakfast. Um, for breakfast? With, yeah, with toast, yeah, and bovril. So that's my favourite. Um, a lot of people have it with a bit of salt and oil, because, it, you know, that bitterness, some people just don't like the intense bitterness yeah. that they get. And uh, my boys, uh, they're nine and and six. They, they love it with salt and olive oil. So we have it in our evening meals. Because it is, I mean, people sort of equate it to sort of Roquette, really, but yeah. it has got a flavour all on its own. It's not the same as Roquette, no, in my it's opinion. Not, it's intense. Rocket can be very, you know, that intense um, flavour, where watercress is, is a little it, bit more subtle. Is, we eat more watercress in the UK than anywhere else in the world. That's unusual yeah. when you think you walk around the supermarket, really, you see, you see a little bit of it, but not, not so much as you should do, in my opinion. It's entirely up to you what goes into this sandwich, but the whole point of this, and this is why you need a decent sort of loaf, this is why it's enough for me and you, I think, yeah, here, Tom. Quite. I'm happy uh, with that. <laughs> you need a decent sort of piece of bread, uh, but you need to hollow it out. Now, the best way to do that, really, is think about how you're going to fill it, first of all. Don't make the hole too big. Once you remove the lid, start hollowing out the loaf for your filling. The breadcrumbs won't go to waste. I'm going to use them in a dish a bit later on. I'm going to get this done this weekend. Are well, you going to make this, are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is good. It's one of these things that you could, you know, literally make today, yeah. set it in the fridge, and have it sort of three or four days later as well. And I've heard on the grapevine you, you actually produce wasabi, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's us. Not a fan, I know. It's the food of the devil, is that, Tom? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Well, you know, we've got to come up with something new. One of my mates decided it'd be a good idea to plant me, as a joke, some horseradish in the bottom of the garden. It's a nightmare. Have yeah. you... It, it takes over. Yeah. Yeah. What you, what you want to try is the wasabi leaves, cos they're very different. You don't get the heat, you'll probably enjoy Do that. you get the flavour? You get a little bit of flavour. That's, but... that's good enough to put me off. <laughs> Basically, we're going to char grill the courgettes now. The salmon's out. We just allow that to cool slightly. Um, and that's the key to this. I mean, using salmon, because it goes great with watercress, but you can use chicken, whatever you want, really. And then it's entirely up to you how you kind of layer this up. I'm going to start my sandwich with a good dollop of watercress pesto, followed with some thinly sliced raw red onions, flakes of the poached salmon, and then some of these sweet grilled Spanish red peppers. I love these. I don't know if you've ever tried these before. These are Spanish peppers. They're not hot, they're not spicy. They're sweet. They're wood-roasted. They're absolutely delicious, and they come in jars. But also, the great thing about this, you can have this hot. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do it hot, then I would put layers of cheese in, maybe some mozzarella, that kind of stuff in there as well. We're just going to pop in even more of this. Every time you do it, of course, a good amount of seasoning, black pepper and a bit of salt. And up you go, and you've got some of this amazing sort of pesto. Now, the good thing about the watercress 
is the pepperiness from it as well, which will give this a real kick. When you're doing sort of farming, you actually sow the seeds. How on earth do you sow a watercress bed that's just water and gravel? How do you do that? Oh, with precision. Yeah, we've developed it. <laughs> yeah, a system. That's not the easiest, can't be the easiest sort of task with it being washing away all the time. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, we, we used to uh, scatter the seedlings into the bed, so grow the seedlings separately and then scatter them in. Now we have something that's a little bit more precision based, so we can actually put the right amount of seed in that we need. Um, but we grow all our seed ourselves, you see, so you can't, you know, buy tons and tons of watercress seed uh, easily. So we have to do that, and we do that separately in, over in Spain every summer. Well, this will fill you up, you see. This is a proper sani now. So it's taken a whole side as this, so it's good enough for two to three people. Yeah. <laughs> we call this a canopy up in Yorkshire, Tom. I don't know where you went with it. No. As you get to the top, each layer you press down, more of this pesto. Don't be frightened to use plenty of this. So pile it all up. Just pop the lid on. It's great, really, because you can play, make this in advance. Mm. It'll last for a whole week. And wrap it up in cling film, leave it in the fridge, and you can take slices of it as and when you want it. But the best part of this is this next bit. This is the bit that makes it all worthwhile. Slice it all the way through. And when you open it out, just check out this for a sandwich. Oh, my word. It's a work of art. That's a proper sandwich. I mean, just look at that. You've got all the lovely layers in there as well. Just tastes delicious. And then the longer you keep it in the fridge, really, the more easy it is to carve. Now, this will actually sort of fall apart a little bit. Now, I'm going to give you a proper portion of this. Just one slice? I think I'll be yeah. It'll be fine. Right, we get to dive into this. I don't know where you start with something like this, but but with the salmon and the peppers and the pesto. Amazing. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well done. For a man who eats watercress every day of the week, I take that as a compliment.